Hey there, Kaya Savas here. I'm the floating voice you hear behind our interviews here on Film Music Media. For something a little different, I'd like to welcome you to a new series here on FMM that's going to dig into the aesthetics and details that make our favorite moments in film, TV, and games stick in our heads and become something memorable. Welcome to episode one of Scene Study, presented by Film Music Media. start off with some basics here. What is a scene? Merriam-Webster defines a scene as one of the subdivisions of a play, such as a, a division of an act presenting continuous action in one place, b, a single situation or unit of dialogue in a play, i.e. the love scene, c, a motion picture or television episode or sequence. Now, for the purpose of focus, and so we don't go rambling on for hours, the purpose of these video essays will be meant to focus on one scene. Rather than explore the complexities of an entire narrative, we're going to call attention to specific scenes that stand out. They could stand out for any number of reasons, including cinematography, acting, score, production design, technical achievements, or even something negative. Yes, that's right. If something isn't working, we'll examine why and use them as a learning experience. Okay, let's get started. In 2002, Sam Mendes followed up his amazing directing debut in American Beauty with a powerful crime drama adapted from a graphic novel written by Max Allen Collins. Road to Perdition tells the story of Michael Sullivan and his quest of revenge to take down the mobsters who murdered his family after his 12-year-old son witnesses one of their business dealings. The important thing to take away here is the key relationship between Tom Hanks' character, Michael Sullivan, and Paul Newman's character, John Rooney. Rooney Ray Sullivan and loves him like a son, more than his actual biological son, who is played brilliantly by Daniel Craig. And who knew that Mendes and Craig would reunite later in their careers? So this film is just amazing from start to finish. From Mendes' directing, the superb acting, the absolutely stunning cinematography by the late Conrad L. Hall, detailed production design by Dennis Gassner, the on-point costumes by Albert Wolski, and of course the perfect score by Thomas Newman, who is still Mendes' go-to composer today. The scene we're going to look at is one of the most memorable in the film. It comes later in the film. It's the death of John Rooney. This scene finally brings Michael Sullivan face to face with his mentor who has stood as a father figure his entire life, but ultimately was responsible for the death of his family. Before we study its parts, let's watch it as a whole.
I'm glad it's you. Okay, now let's go back and take a look at why this scene is simply stunning. We start off the scene with Rooney being walked to his car, surrounded by his goons. The gentle sound of rain fills the space, along with the score starting to creep in. In a seamless fashion, we find the sound of the rain fade out, so that the score is the only thing we hear. All diegetic sound has faded away. Okay, quick pause. Just a little refresher. Diegetic sound is sound that occurs in the space of the scene. Essentially any sound that the characters can hear. Non-diegetic sound is anything that only the audience hears, such as the score, but it can also refer to voiceover or narration. Okay, back to the scene. The score immediately sets a somber tone as we see John Rooney slowly come to a realization. A quick glance. The other mobsters are now on alert. This shot suggests that something is waiting in the darkness. The gunfire erupts, yet we do not hear a single shot. We still only have score. The camera pulls us in, the full weight of realization on John's face. He now makes peace that he is about to die. And then, in a shot that is so horrible and beautiful at the same time, we see all the nameless mobsters mowed down to the trickle of a somber piano. The camera trucks in a semicircle, giving us the first real sense of motion in the scene. Okay, freeze it. Now this shot is probably my favorite shot in the entire film. Compositionally, it's just perfect. I mean, let's slap a golden mean graph on there. Boom! Look at that. The weight of the frame with John still with his hand on the car door pulls your eye. The rest of the frame are bodies of these mobsters that are now littering the street. John Rooney is naked and fully vulnerable now. Look at how the scene is lit. A hazy light falls down from straight above. A white light. What lies straight above in Irish Catholic belief? It's heaven. Where are they currently? In a soupy, rainy, cold darkness. There's a lot to infer here. We finally see Michael emerge from the shadows. As the camera trucks in one more time, it not only brings John closer to the audience, but it brings Michael closer to John. Notice the sound of the rain easing back in. The score hits us with the most sentimental strings in the whole scene, underlying the tragedy and loss that both men are feeling. Okay, let's freeze it one more time. Let's study John's face. What are the some things that we get here? Sorrow. Regret heartache, guilt. Cut to Michael's face. Anger, pain, disappointment, also sorrow. I'm glad it's you. I'm glad it's you. John Rooney utters a phrase of endearment, showing a last breath of love and compassion, even when he knows what Michael is about to do. We see now more pain and sadness in Michael's face as he is about to pull the trigger. And then, we are about to hear the only gunshots in this entire scene. It's not a single gunshot, it's not two, it's not three. 
it's a holding down of the trigger that unloads an entire clip of bullets into this man who Michael once loved like a father. This gunshot is a scream. It is just raw, intense power. It's every ounce of emotion of Michael coming out through the bullets. Also notice how the score gently fades out to leave us this gap of just rainfall that makes it feel all too real. Rooney's dead. Bystanders look peering through their windows as that heavenly light still illuminates faintly from above. Michael glances upwards to see these faceless figures watching. Each figure also has a white glowing light behind them, safe and dry in their homes. The visual symbolism can easily be inferred as heaven, angels watching down from above as Michael seals his fate for eternal damnation. Now, we all know Michael doesn't make it in the end. He passes the point of redemption in this scene, and he reaches perdition in the end, leaving his son hopefully on a righteous path better than he walked down. Road to Perdition is a powerful and moving film, and the craftsmanship behind it is simply awe-inspiring. I hope this scene study illuminated something for you and provided a window into appreciating the filmmaking craft. Did you interpret the scene in the same way? Did you see something different? What did you take away from it? I'd love to hear your thoughts, and be sure to list any ideas you might have for future scene studies. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.